Alright guys, you know, <coughs> it's 10 o'clock at fucking night, I have already done my, my main rant on Humpty Dumpty Tribe and over at Collapse Chronicles, I should be over here, going over here on Netflix, uh, watching some whatever uh, TV comedian or whatever to get my fucking mind off uh, of how fucked we are here on a, what is it now? It is this nasty Thursday night, September 26, 2024, guys. But I, I'm sorry. So, something has come across my radar that I cannot just, just let it go w w without some comment. Uh, some, something has appeared on this computer that it, it, it's just dredged up some bile inside of me that I, that I have encountered something so offensive to every, just, just everything that I hold dear uh, about good writing. Uh, it, it just, when, when I encounter something just so jaw-droppingly abhorrent to every cell in my body that when I read something and, 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 uh, and, and, and the vomit just starts rising up in my esophagus, I, I, I can't go to bed without, without sending out a warning. And no, this is not a review of, uh, of Project uh, whatever it is, 2025 or whatever they, they call that thing. We're, 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 we're talking something much worse. And I, I am embarrassed to admit I found this over at medium.com. I found this over at medium.com. Uh, you know, on, on, on coming through my feed, uh, on one of these who I thought was a doomer, some man that, that, I, that I've had respect for uh, as a writer, uh, I, I think I've even read a couple of his essays over at Collapse Chronicles. I know this man knows how to write. And I guess this dude lives over in England. He calls himself the Pathless Pilgrim. The Pathless Pilgrim. Uh, he describes himself as a veteran vegan and a bad Buddhist. He obviously is a fan of alliteration, which is frequently the sign of a uh, uh, of an amateur writer. Uh, but anyway, he has penned this essay called "The Fall of Albion: A Lament for the Dying of the Land." Okay. Uh, but before we even get into this, so I don't know how many of these you guys know something about my own personal history is that I have five years of college in journalism and communications. I know a little bit uh, uh, about writing. I, I'm not acting like uh, I'm ever going to get a fucking Pulitzer Prize. I have probably, you know, back when I was a journalist, I have probably written, myself written and published 2,000 uh, articles back, uh, you know, back before the internet uh, when any 14-year-old girl uh, could, could go on and, and be a famous author, you know, back when you really had to be a writer and, and get published and actually get paid for your work. Uh, the, the, that's another rant for another day. And, and in addition to writing, uh, I have uh, also served uh, quite a bit of time as an editor 
where I would get, you, you know, I would get the writing from another writer, and it was my job to, you know, hopefully with a very light red pen, make some editorial improvements or instructions, whatever, but before embarrassing myself, my publication, and the writer himself or herself by, by putting this out uh, back before the days of the internet. So anyway, <clears throat> one of the things that you learn in uh, probably freshman journalism when, you know, you're some uh, starry-eyed 18-year-old uh, uh, thinking you're going to be the new fucking Shakespeare or whatever. Wasn't it Bill Shakespeare who said like 500 years ago, I think it was Shakespeare who said the first thing we do is we kill all the adverbs. Thank you, Bill Shakespeare. The first thing we do is kill all the adverbs. But what we learn about very early in the process of learning how to be a writer and an editor is keeping an eye out for what is called purple prose. Purple prose, think a, you know, a, a 12-year-old girl uh, writing a fan letter to Justin Bieber. All right. Uh, so for those of you who do not know what purple prose is, we're going to go over to, uh, we're going to get an AI overview. What is meant by purple prose? Okay. This is an AI overview. I probably just used the carbon, it created the carbon emissions of a small sub-Saharan African country by asking the question, what is meant by purple prose? Okay. Purple prose is a term used to describe writing that is overly ornate, flowery, or elaborate. It is often characterized by long sentences multi-syllabic words, excessive adjectives, adverbs, and metaphors, cliches, melodramatic descriptions, and a focus on style over substance. Purple prose is generally considered to be poor writing because it can slow down the pace of a story, detract from the main point, make the text hard to follow, and leave the reader bored or perplexed, or in, in, in this case, uh, running outside to vomit on the lawn. Some tips to avoid purple prose include using a thesaurus sparingly, focusing on your audience, meaning would you want to sit down and read this, focusing on your audience as opposed to how clever you are, empathizing with your reader, not wanting to torture your reader, cutting out words that are not necessary. In literary criticism, purple prose is overly ornate prose text that may disrupt a narrative flow by drawing undesirable attention to its own extravagant style of writing, thereby diminishing the appreciation of the prose overall. Purple prose is characterized by the excessive use of adjectives, adverbs, and metaphors. So, uh, I have this buddy who uh, shall remain nameless uh, that we 
you know, we share back and forth whenever we find examples of, the, of bad writing, uh, your daily puke. So I sent him this essay and uh, with the note, after years of struggle, you remain the one person on the planet who gets the puke in this essay. With any luck, you cannot open it. And his response back for me was, lucky for me, I could not open it, but I got far enough into it, four paragraphs that a little bit of vomit did come into my throat. I cannot believe you don't know anyone else who would consider this puke-worthy. I mean, it is so puke-worthy, it may be it may even be slit my wrists worthy. And uh, so if, if the man who, who's, who uh, said that wants to own up in the comments, please feel free to. You might not, uh, you, you might not uh, uh, be surprised when you, anyway, I'm gonna let him make that decision. So anyway, I admit, I guess I did not pay much attention to the to this term Albion, uh, and, and I and I really didn't know what Albion meant. And and, and, uh, and, and so, even though this, I, I I just assumed was was another one of these just uh, puke worthy. Uh, you know, Native American wannabes, the, these, these white guys uh, masquerading as Indians, uh, doing some fucking ode to the noble savage, one, one of these cringe-worthy, vomit-inducing odes to the noble savage. And I, and I thought for a second, what, what the Albion? Uh, that doesn't sound uh, very Native American or noble savage to me, but I quickly lost, uh, uh, you, you know, I, I, I wish that, uh, that Andy the Gardener, that I could ask Andy, to go, Andy the Gardener to explain to us what the fuck Albion is, but I don't know if you guys noticed this, I had to kick Andy the Gardener off of Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Andy the Gardener can no longer comment on this channel because he had to go and fuck it up and wish me a happy birthday on Sunday. So I can't hear from Andy. So uh, I went to uh, Wikipedia instead uh, and looked up Albion. So uh, Albion is an alternative name for Great Britain, the oldest at that attestation of the toponym comes from the Greek language. It is sometimes used poetically and generally to refer to the island, but is less common than the term Britain today. So now I'm totally confused. I, I, I don't know who the fuck the guy's even talking about. Who, who, who the fuck the pathless pilgrim is talking about? Is he talking about fucking Neanderthals? Is he talking about fucking Vikings? As far as I know, no fucking uh, brown-skinned or red-skinned noble savages ever walked or took a fucking canoe uh, uh, across the, uh, any fucking land bridge or whatever to, to, to get to England. I, I'm totally confused. Who the fuck is he talking about? He, 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 he's obviously talking about some fucking kind of honky. Uh, I, I guess he's talking about maybe the Druids. Is he talking about uh, the guys who built fucking Stonehenge? I don't know who the fuck the dude is even talking about uh, in, in here. Uh, I, I, as I say, I thought he was talking about the fucking noble savages, but he's talking about fucking honky. So I'm already confused. Ah, but anyway, guys, and 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 I, if if 
if you have eaten recently, uh, you, you can't listen. You can only listen to this on a uh, on an empty stomach. If you are driving, okay, do not uh, you pull over. You do not want to be behind the wheel of a moving vehicle. You will be a danger to yourself and others. But as my buddy kind of alluded to, uh, th this is the very worst thing I could have encountered uh, in, a, in, in a depressive episode. Because if I wasn't already ready to fucking kill myself now, uh, th this, this fucking thing truly, truly does, as my buddy says... It, 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 it surpasses uh, vomit-inducing to slit, slitting your wrist-inducing. But take it away, pathless pilgrim, and inflict upon your readers the, 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 just, you know, the, 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 this essay... You know, I'm reading this, this goddamn thing, you know, it makes that fucking, what was that book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, uh, you know, Jonathan Livingston Seagull uh, deserves, or, or the fucking bridges of Madison County, uh, or goddamn Pulitzer Prize winners in, in, in uh, comparison to this god-awful tripe, but anybody who does not know what the definition of purple prose is, anybody who does not understand uh, what would earn a, uh, a, a, a beginning freshman in any journalism school an F, uh, you're getting ready to take a lesson in bad writing. <clears throat> The Fall of Albion, <coughs> a lament for the dying of the land. A lament for the dying of the land. Okay, take it away. For 3,000 years, we have lived on this land. I do not know who the fuck this mythical we is he's talking about. For 3,000 years, we have lived on this land. We have walked her rolling hills under the calls of Curlew. Under, <laughs> under the calls of Curlew and Lapwing and the sweet song of the lark. We sang in the forests of these beautiful isles, our voices weaving with sunbeams as they filtered through the ivy-covered boughs. Okay, can voices weave with sunbeams? I thought voices were auditory and sunbeams were visionary. I anyway, our voices weaving with some beams as they filtered through the ivy colored boughs. We swam in the rivers and streams which flow like life's blood through the deep vales where once vast shoals of silver fish darted in the clear depths, or leapt high up white surging falls to reach the waters of their birth. And then this one is highlighted. This paragraph, I have no idea who highlighted this. Uh, the, my, my buddy, uh, th this is where my buddy uh, was ready to slit his wrist. So he went from vomit-inducing to wrist-slitting horror. <clears throat> we have felt the rush of exhilaration as we scaled the lofty peaks of our highlands, scrambled up slipping slopes of slate and scree. Is that... <laughs> 
you know, it, 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 I mean, Dr. Seuss, uh, Dr. Seuss scrambled up slipping slopes of slate and scree. I, I, I remember when I was 16 in a, in a writing class and I wrote this ironic article uh, making fun of alliteration called the fighting farks of, 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 of Fern, Fern Ham, you know what I'm saying, where every fucking word uh, in the essay began with an F. Uh, when I was 16 years old, uh, I, I, I was already making fun of anybody who would be so gauche, so fucking amateur as to actually string together the words scrambled up slipping slopes of slate and scree and hauled hand over hand up mighty boulders and terrifying cliff faces to reach the peaks where eagles cry and the silence of God roars in our ears. We have, we have sat through the darkest of nights we have sat through the darkest of nights, the long nights of winter, and the intimate nights of summer, staring into the sacred flames as we dreamed the dreams of our ancestors. Okay, guys, we're building here. We fell in love as we walked through the rich meadows that once adorned this magical landscape, our clothes and skin made golden by the pollen of a sea of blossoms in a myriad of different hues. And now for the sex scene. We made love in the warm glades of ancient woodlands, held safe in the, <laughs> held safe in the mossy roots of ancient beech trees, even as we held each other in sun bronzed arms. Okay, so this is this was where the point I uh, I, I I had to go back to my to my buddy uh, uh, about the uh, 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 about the daily puke and uh, and uh, I, 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 I had to update my uh, my email to him uh, I, I, I said amigo you missed the sex scene we made love in the warm glades of ancient woodlands held safe in the mossy roots of ancient beech trees even as we held each other in sun bronzed arms my uh, my, my uh, comment to my buddy was I don't know about you brother but fucking on a beech root doesn't sound that comfortable to me all I can say is my squall would have been on the bottom in that configuration. I can only imagine where most of, of those ancient rotting beech leaves, not to mention the moss, would have ended up after that sun-bronzed embrace. I feel a rant in the making after I recover from reading this. So, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, I've mentioned uh, a lot about my, you know, that, that nymphomaniac next door neighbor of mine, Betty Boop, uh, you know, with the cucumber and the golf course. Uh, that, that woman, she would fuck anywhere. Uh, 
you know, she was all down uh, for fucking, you know, on like a on like a putting green at, at the local golf course. But never in my history with with Betty Boop with that nymphomaniac. Or that, uh, or that other nymphomaniac that I went to that orgy with on my 39th birthday. I cannot ever recall back in the years of my history with nymphomaniacs ever having one woman to suggest that we were going to fuck on a moss-covered beech tree root or, or, or any kind of root. Uh... Anyway, that that that's that's just me. Okay, the warm glades of ancient woodlands. We have drummed and danced among the time-worn standing stones, smoothed by the wind and the rain of countless seasons, and by travelers from every corner of this venerable land. We have walked and run and ridden. Ridden, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure what they were riding. From Albion's white cliffs to her dark and jagged northern isles, wandering her ancient deep-worn paths as generations did before us, finding our place in this wild and wonderful landscape. We have known every tree, every rock, in every turn of the gurgling stream with the intimacy of a best friend in the place we called home. Yeah, I, I, I bet uh, they, uh, you know, they probably, you know, they know every rock uh, to fuck on. Anyway, we have watched with tears in our eyes and grief in our hearts as this sacred land was torn apart stone by stone, tree by tree. We have seen the lush water meadows. This is one word, water meadow. We have seen the lush water meadows with their silver haze of mist at dawn and he's back to the pollen, and their golden haze of pollen in the heavy afternoon sun, bulldozed and ruined. We have clung screaming! <coughs> screaming! To the arms of the trees! which once held us as we fucked lovingly in their care, unable to protect them in their hour of need from the chainsaws. And the men in yellow coats, not sure who the men in yellow coats are in, in uh, Mary Old England, that's some reference that... Uh, uh, not not quite sure who the men in yellow coats. I'm just thinking it's time for a fucking man in a white coat. Okay, to 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 come throw a straight jacket uh, around pathless pilgrim, but but before he can before he can write one more word on his keyboard. And and, and again, I I never know to I, I, to this minute. I have no idea who we are. Now we sit on barren hillsides and watched in stunned and broken silence as black tar rivers replace the silver streams. The song of the lark has given way to the roar of traffic, the mighty forest supplanted by housing estates which spread like cancer across the ruined and ravaged face of this once beautiful land. The sacred beat of the drum has been substituted for the electro beat of the nightclubs, which suck money and soul from their victims in exchange for cheap booze and tawdry thrills. And, and, and this, of course, I, 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 I could uh, get into my rant 
uh, about that motherfucking uh, uh, whorehouse in the Peruvian Amazon. Another rant for another day if you've never heard this one. The quiet intimacy of low voices murmuring around the campfire has been replaced by the shouts and screams of a million narcissistic clones, each clamoring for attention as they vie to be more like the others than anyone else. The wandering tribes who once roamed free have been tamed and broken, herded and confined to concrete wastelands. The nomadic lifestyle of my ancestors has been outlawed. Empty shells of humanity sit in empty shells of brick, staring at the TV or scrolling through timelines in quiet desperation. Well, I can certainly, uh, I, I can certainly empathize with people scrolling through in quiet desperation. Uh, the, the lines of geese streaming north and south with these seasons are unseen by the lines of commuters streaming north to south with the daily rush hour traffic. Their fumes poison the air we breathe and the barren roadside verges devoid of insect life go unnoticed by those who always have somewhere else they need to be. The march of progress has trampled all that was good. The tumor of consumer growth has all but eaten away the last vestige of freedom. Soon, the last of us who love these rich and verdant lands will be gone. And the men in yellow, the men in yellow following orders from faceless suits will move in to fell the last tree. One day, not too far away now, all that will remain of these sacred memories will be words on a screen. Then these two will flicker and fade, vanishing forever as the cancer finally kills its whole host and the whole edifice collapses in on itself. There will be no lament, for we have said our goodbyes to those sweet, special places that will soon be gone forever, like the faces of those we once loved. Our mourning is done, our tears are shed, all that was wild and sacred and free is already long gone, trampled under the jackboots of progress. Our only dreams now are of what was lost as we await the final end to the long and tortured fall of Albion. And on a ruined wall that borders the stumps of a sacred grove where friendships were forged and love once flourished, painted letters worn and faded by rain and time can just be made out. Gone, but not forgotten. They read. We have 319 claps, and we have eight comments. Eight comments. Here's Malky. You write so well and, ha and always have something important to say. Well done with 20 uh, claps. And... Uh, then Pathless Pilgrim says, Thank you, Malky. I woke up today feeling pretty down, feeling that this piece I had submitted was a pile of crap, and maybe I should just give up this writing lark, so it's good to get some positive feedback. And uh, 50, 50 claps, and Malky comments back, we all feel like that sometimes. 
and then this guy Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles. Don't take this personally, brother, but sometimes first intuitions are the best course of action. I honestly did not know when I first read this if you were being ironic or not, but thank you for the unintentional humor if you were not. You are better than this pathless pilgrim. Needless to say, got no response back and no claps. Here is a sad sentiment, beautifully written. Yes, here. We have watched with tears in our eyes and grief in our hearts as this sacred land was torn apart, stone by stone, tree by tree. The whole article is worth praising, but this paragraph is just amazing. Ten thumbs up. Here is beautiful work, stunning, haunting, and absorbing, much like the people's ongoing saga with the land. Yes. I try to honor this with my poetry, oh God. Uh, sometimes I feel that isn't enough and my words are too small for such a big wound. Ten thumbs up. Gone, but not forgotten. Excellent writing. Yes. Here is your writing, your writings touch my very soul. And there is not one I have read that does not make me cry. Well, this is actually the first one of his that made me cry. I have never read one of his essays that made me cry uh, until this one. It made, it made me cry, it made me puke, and it made my buddy want to slit his wrist. We are literally destroying God's creation. How he must cry also. Thank you for your most heartfelt articles. I truly hope and pray people will care. Ten thumbs up. And one more for Sam Mitch from Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles. The beat of the myth of the noble savage marches on. Not one clap. Oh, God. Oh, God. Just when I thought I could not get more depressed. I had to read about the death of Albion. And my depression has very little to do with the death of Albion. The lament is only for myself for having read that now twice. Anyway. I have to go uh, watch, I, I don't know, some Bill Burr comedy special on uh, Netflix to recover from my mortal wound. Bye, guys.